Hey, Chris, how are you? Hey, how's it going, Marty? It's good. You can hear me okay? Yes, I can. I can't uh, see you. Uh, well, I don't have my camera on. Oh, okay. Can you yeah. see me? I see your name. I don't see, uh, I don't see you. All right, so. let me see if I can. Oh, here it is. Start video. Yeah. There I am. Hi. I've already Hi. got it recording as well. So I want to, I've just had a lot of computer issues and I wanted to not click too many things <laughs> to keep it going. Hi, Zach. Yeah. Afternoon. I actually you? ended up on my little tablet because our power went out a little while ago. Oh, no. So, but it came back on, but I don't want to trust it because they're working on a transformer down the way. I gotcha. Can you all hear me? You're very far away sounding. Mm -hmm. I am? No, uh, Zach is. Oh, okay. How about now? That's a lot better. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Hi, Zach. How's it going, Chris? Good, except I've got COVID. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm sorry <laughs> to hear that. Yeah, I tested positive on Sunday. Jeez, well, thank you for still coming to the meeting. Appreciate that. I'm glad it's online. <laughs> yeah. Are you feeling okay or having a lot of symptoms? Uh, pretty rotten. Not very good. It's a lot of sinus congestion and cough and a real low-grade fever and just lack of energy. But today's much better. Oh, my gosh. Well... Hope you feel better soon. I got it um, maybe six months ago. And yeah, it was pretty bad for about three days. And Marty's had all kinds of trouble with it. <laughs> yeah. We don't mention the word COVID around me anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, my wife, my wife got it from our neighbor and then she gave it to me. So we're very sharing around here. <laughs> uh, I think the whole world shared on this one. Oh, geez. <clears throat> We just never could get everybody on board. Unfortunately. Okay, John, you sound. I think you need to reconnect your microphone. You sound kind of slow motion. <laughs> you there, John? Mm -hmm. hmm. You might have to get out of the meeting and get back in, possibly. Well, I apologize ahead of time for any sniffling and coughing. No, okay. again, I mean, really appreciate you taking the time since... We're down to a bare quorum. Yeah. I'll try and remember to mute myself. <laughs> <laughs> no worries at all. I do have the there recording you going. You sound good, John, I think. <clears throat> yeah, good. Yeah, I don't know. There was something up. I couldn't couldn't hear you, but it seems good. Yeah, yeah, you sound good too. So you, did you go on your summer vacation yet, Zach? I haven't. No, I was planning on going to Portland in August, but I, I haven't set it all up yet. And I guess I should. I heard that uh, flights are really expensive right now. Yeah, they've gone so, crazy. Yeah. How about you, John? Um, we're driving. We've done this the last couple of years, driving to Cambria, uh, California, which is just south of, um, oh, I can't remember the name, the uh, newspaper magnets, oh, Hearst Castle. Oh, cool. Yeah, and, um, but it's, yeah, there's an area there where the coast is, is real cool and moist and the plants there are crazy cool because of the particular microclimate that's there. And there's a lot of artists and plants and places to eat and nature, it's a lot of nature stuff. There's a ton of, I don't know if they, sea lions or uh, sea elephants or something laying all over the place, um, wanting to make babies and eat and sleep. <laughs> Sounds beautiful. Are you there right now? 
No, um, we'll be there actually in September. We're going to do it kind of a shoulder season, I think they call it. Nice. Um, kind of coincides with my wife's um, less busy time at work. But uh, yeah, we went to Italy last fall. And then we just bought a new car, so we're pretty tapped. We're we're lucky to be even just driving over there and you know renting a place. I hear you, yeah. And with uh, with gas right now, <laughs> it's a whole other expense. We bought a, a Toyota Rav4 Prime. It's got it's a plug-in hybrid, so uh, on a full battery charge, you can drive forty-two miles plus before the uh, gasoline motor comes on engine that's cool nice so you know 95 percent of the time it's just you know to go to work and back from kachina it's just just plug it in awesome. we, nice. we finally went down this past weekend it's been six weeks and we hadn't put a drop of gas in it since we drove it back from connecticut um until wow. this past weekend so it's it's pretty nice we we like it and, and then we sold our Prius, and I have a CRV to do my inspections out of, which is gas, but I don't do that many of those. And so came into a free like Vespa kind of thing. So I'm getting my motorcycle license, and <laughs> I think I'm going to look like a dweeb on the road. You'll see me with this, you know, super safety helmet, you know, because, hey, going 40 miles an hour, an old guy, you know, and get hit by something on distant town that's as, as good as a big accident so the only thing is in the italian movies it's just you know guys in shorts and t-shirts or you know talking talking smack to the ladies that they go by and you're looking be able for to you on that because yeah. <laughs> it'll be muffled with a face shield and everything <laughs> just be careful it's going to be ridiculous looking but yeah well, i'm going to take the back way that um old man's park whatever road from gachina up to um eight i don't know the north end of 89a there um but anyway and then well, go up to the go ahead. Well, sorry i was gonna say it looked like diane popped in for a bit i don't know if she's the person on the oh there she is diane can you hear us Actually, I wonder if she's not around. I wonder if she's calling in from vacation land. Possible. It looks like she's turning her camera on, maybe. Sorry, Natalie, dealing with some technical issues. We'll get right to it. Marty, do you have um, Diane's phone number? I might call her and see if I can help her through it. Let me look for that. Give me a moment. Thank you. Did you get that, Zach? I sent a message to you.
Natalie, will you need to share your screen or present anything or anybody else in your party? Like, yes, I've got a short presentation. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Yes, I would like to. I have a short presentation. Oh, okay. Hold on, I'll make you a co host. Okay, I just talked to Diane, the chair of the Board of Adjustment. She's been having a, a couple technical issues. She's going to try to log out and log back in. And thanks for your patience, everybody. Zach, if that doesn't work well, she can still call in, right? She can. It's not, it looks like, Diane, can you hear us? She can hear us. Um, Diane, so... <laughs> Maybe you should try to call in and I can, okay. Okay, I can put a phone number for you in the chat. Diane, when I logged on, I couldn't, couldn't hear them. And I clicked on the, on the little arrow thing on the mute in the bottom left corner and it said select microphone, I changed it to same as system and select speaker, I changed it to same as system. And then all of a sudden everything was working. Looks like we have a chat also, Marty, from a person named Susan. I don't know if she's just from the general public. She's saying that she doesn't hear anything. I'm not sure who she is. She might need to log out and try to log back in or check her settings. Or just try calling in. Okay, I put that in the chat. <laughs> Very chatty today. This is the first time I've had this many issues with uh, the Zoom meetings. You're giving us too much time off. <laughs> <laughs> Have to retrain us every time. <laughs> Zach, is your camera turned off? It is off for now. I was, I didn't know if that was what was taking up too much bandwidth for her or what. Hmm, that's her. Dan, you're <laughs> muted. Your thing is muted. So I don't know if that's part of the issue here. Well, it, it, she didn't show uh, muted before when, when she was having the same problem, I, I believe. Right. Although, it seems like Although, she, yeah, things, things change. Mm -hmm. It seems like she can hear us, but we can't hear her. <clears throat> we do need her for the full quorum. So she could, as we here's said, this, call in. Yeah, here's a cell phone number. Oh, is that her? Hi. Diane, you're a little bit echoey. I think it's because you probably have two devices using the volume. So, 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 so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I muted myself 
on that. Let me ask a clarification because I've got a bottleneck for a building. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. <sighs> Okay, Diane, if your phone is near a speaker where it's coming from somewhere else, I think you're feeding back. Okay. Sounds like the phone is working, Diane. So on your computer, you could turn that off if that's what's giving you volume. Oh, but you'll need to see the presentation. I can hear you now without the feedback, but you're a bit faint. Okay. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Hi, computer. Okay, can you hear me now? That sounds much better. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I turned my microphone off on my computer. And now I have the phone and I can see Zach. And I turned my video and my and I muted myself. So but I'm here. Yay. Okay. Are we ready to start? Can you somebody Good talk here. so I can okay I can hear you. Okay for a minute I thought maybe I couldn't hear you. Um Okay, hold on. I just need to go to my packet and I'm having trouble. <laughs> oh, let's see. Okay. Um, hold on a second. I'm working on it, guys. Sorry. My, my computer was working great up until two minutes before. Um, before it was time for the meeting to start. So I don't know what happened, but my internet completely bonked. No worries, we can I hear you. And it looks, it sounds like you can see us on your screen. So yeah, that's good. There and I just got out of full screen. So now I can find my, um, I just am going back to try to find my minutes from oh. uh, Marty so we can start this. So, um, Get this going. I apologize for any trouble. No worries. All right. Okay. So here we are. And today is June 21st, 2022. And I should have downloaded this because now it's taking a while. Hold on. Okay, now I can read. Okay, today we have the Board of Adjustment for June 21st, 2022 meeting um, to commence. And today we have John McCartney, Chris Wani, and Diane Patterson. And do we have anybody else in the um, attending? Madam Chair, it looks like board. we have, uh, so we haven't yet appointed Brian Bates or the Board of Supervisors hand, hasn't, but I see that he's on the meeting uh, and I'm looking to get him appointed uh, as soon as possible, hopefully by your next meeting. Okay, very good. So we have our uh, three members for today. Hi. And and our first um, item will be the approval of minutes from the February 15th, 2022 meeting. 
This is Chris. I move that we approve the minutes as is. I would second that with the comment that it seemed awful short. Is that all we talked? <laughs> anyway, I, th I think the, the main parts are there probably. So yeah, I'll second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, it's unanimous. Today we have one hearing, cases VAR 22002. And um, so we'll have staff will present and then the applicant can speak and then the uh, board will uh, discuss the, the case. And so Zach, here you go. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is case number VAR 22002. Can you see this on your screen, the presentation, Madam Chair? Yes, I can. Thank you. Great. Thanks. So the applicant for this case is Natalie Griffin of EPS Group uh, from Mesa. She's representing Speedway Inc. The owner of the subject property is Belmont Interchange 185 LLC from Queen Creek. The property is located at uh, northeast of the Belmont interchange on I-40. And the zoning for this property is planned community to the heavy commercial standards. The entirety of Belmont is a planned community. The request is for a sign that's 40 feet in height where 15 feet is the height maximum typically. Subject property is 7.74 acres in size and it's vacant. And it is flat, but it, it lies approximately 11 feet below the adjacent highway right of way grade. So here on your screen is an aerial photo. The subject property is here. Here's highway I-40 and the interchange. Pilot Travel Center, Best Western and Shadow Mountain Village, the multifamily section are to the north. And to the east is Flagstaff Meadows, the single family portion. So this is a photo of the subject property looking southeast from the intersection of the Belmont uh, exit ramp and Shadow Mountain Drive. And over here, if you can see my cursor on the screen, uh, basically, on the right portion, you can see where the, there's that grade difference between the off-ramp and the subject property. Back? Yes. I'm sorry, to. could you go back to that last picture? So you had a discussion about 11 feet plus 4 feet, and I was thinking this picture might be good to look at it, um, those dimensions. Can you describe on this picture what the 11 and, and the 4 are? Yes, yeah, sure, Mr. McCartney. So the property grade is here and up on the right side. And there is another picture too that might help, but that there's an 11 foot grade distance between uh, difference between natural grade of the subject property here and the off ramp here. And the four foot I'll show in a later slide is they have a detention basin shown on the proposed site plan. So that is four feet deeper than natural grade here uh, that you see right now. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. thank you. You're thank welcome. Thank you very much. Sure. So this photo I think even illustrates that a little bit better. Here's the natural grade of the subject property. And here is the adjacent grade of that off ramp. So this photo is taken heading westbound on I-40 uh, looking north and here's the subject property. Here's where that off ramp is. And this photo basically is just jumped forward from that same location. So you can see this is maybe where there's the least amount of grade difference here. Uh, further up to the west here is where there's the larger grade difference where the applicant is looking to put the sign. And Actually, if I go back to this photo, the sign would be somewhere around in this area. <clears throat> so here's the applicant's site plan. So the speedway would include a convenience store and of course the gasoline pump islands. 
And over here on the western portion, you can see this is a detention basin. And each of these lines represents a drop in grade from natural grade, so uh, a one foot drop. So the base of the sign here is located at the bottom of the detention basin. That's where the proposed, uh, where the applicant proposes to put the sign. The applicant proposes it at 40 feet in height from the bottom there. And this is an elevation drawing. So you can see that the applicant is showing a 72 square foot sign with the Speedway logo on it. And uh, here's the pole here. They do call out some colors and materials. And I did want to make the Board of Adjustment aware that within the Belmont area, there's the Belmont area plan that has a design review overlay. And after this approval, Speedway would need to go to the Planning and Zoning Commission to get approval of um, site layout, colors, materials, and that sort of thing. But this decision is, is basically just on the 40-foot tall sign that the applicant's requesting. <clears throat> this is a rendering that the applicant provided uh, of the, coming off the westbound I-40 ramp. This is where they're showing their sign. And this is the Speedway building. So this is, you know, decently far away from the actual off-ramp here. And you can see some of the existing wall for Shadow Mountain Village. As far as citizen participation, Staff sent out letters to neighbors within 300 feet of the subject property. And originally when the staff report was written, there were no uh, responses to that. Staff also posted a sign on the property, uh, letting people be aware of how to join the hearing. Since then, uh, two Belmont residents have sent letters to the Board of Supervisors, which then came down to our staff uh, in general opposition to the case or any increases in signs in the Belmont area. I think uh, when we were having some technical issues, I got another one of those. And it looks like we do have some members of the public uh, that are on the meeting that may be interested in speaking on the case later. For staff's general analysis, uh, 40, a 40-foot 40 high sign at this location is not the minimum needed to overcome the distance in grade. So staff has calculated out what that minimum distance would be. And because of the four-foot deep basin, uh, the 11-foot difference in, the, in grade from natural grade of the subject property to the adjacent highway right of way. Staff has calculated that 30 foot would be the maximum height needed based on uh, that amount of height plus 15 feet is the typical uh, height that's allowed for freestanding signs in this zone. Uh, as the Board of Adjustment is aware, you have to make one of the first three findings, A, B, or C, and both D and E in order to approve the case. And in staff's analysis, staff was able to make finding B, that there was an exceptional or extraordinary circumstance applicable to the property um, that doesn't appear on other properties in the same zone. So that being the height difference in grade between the grade of the subject property and the adjacent right of way. Staff was also able to make E that the granting of the variance would not be detrimental to public health, safety, or welfare. Staff did check with the building department and the our engineering, uh, I guess, divisions. Those are divisions in our department uh, to see if there was a clear site triangle and that other requirements could be met from their divisions. And staff did find that th that would be able to happen, that they could meet the safety standards. Um, with the applicant's request at 40 feet, staff is not able to make the finding D that it is the minimum that would accomplish the need for the variance. So staff is recommending 
that if otherwise the Board of Adjustment is able to make the findings that the Board of Adjustment approve a 30 foot height uh, as discussed earlier in some of the slides. For sign variances, there are two additional findings that must be made. And so the first is about aesthetic and the second is about not creating a hazard to public safety. As far as aesthetic, uh, based on that grade difference, a staff could make both findings for a 30 foot high sign, but not for a 40 foot high sign. So with that, staff is recommending approval of case VAR 22002, subject to the conditions of the staff report with a 30 foot maximum sign height. But if the Board of Adjustment is able to make the required findings of fact for the 40 foot sign that's requested, staff recommends a change in the recommended condition number one to say uh, 40 feet rather than 30 feet. And with that, I'm happy to take any questions from the board. So Zach, this is Diane. This is, this is this, oh, sorry. This is, um, so this is the same property that came in for a much higher sign previously, correct? I'm sure that's correct. Okay. Thank you. The, the previous request was somewhere between 120 and 140 feet, I think. Right, right. And I, 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 I figured it had to be the same parcel. And I remember what our reasoning was about not wanting excessive heights. And that was, um, and we wound up with a denial rather than, um, uh, it's, you know, working through anything um, like this at that time. Okay, just making sure I've got the right property. I don't have anything. This is John. I don't either. This is Chris. Okay, great. Um, uh, so can somebody read to me just oh, um, the rec how only because I'm having trouble switching screens. I'm very, I excuse, there we go. Thanks. I just wanted to see what the um, recommendation um, in the staff report was um, specifically. Madam Chair, if, you, that. if you'd like to, I could read it out. I can, I can see it now. It's approved with the site. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that it, that and I'm sure it was in there that it, it would it's specifically for the site plan and that that cannot be, um, that 30 feet cannot be used anywhere other than specific to what the, is on the plan. Because truly, if they had to put a 15 foot sign up, they would have, it could not be located at this corner. It would have to be somewhere else, correct? Right, Madam Chair. So the first, re I think the first condition that's recommended uh, states that the sign would be substantially compliant with the plans uh, and that any substantial modifications would require additional review by the Board of Adjustment. So it would be in that location or substantially similar to that location, move just a little bit uh, would be the only thing that would be allowable if the, uh, the Board were approving the case tonight. Okay, and, and obviously building and engineering don't have a problem with a, a structure in a detention basin? Madam Chair, the engineering division and the building division took a preliminary look at the case and they didn't say that there was any issue with it. They said it was fine. Okay, thank you very much. All Zach, right. Zach, I have a quick question so I if I can. Hello? Yes, please. Yeah, um, this is Chris. Um, I guess kind of piggybacking on what Diane was saying. So if this were to be approved, either way, 30 or 40, whatever, um, they couldn't then relocate it to a higher elevation and then end up exceeding what's approved in the first place. Is that correct? It would have to stay in that basin. 
Mr. Wani, yes. Uh, the It's sort of broad in that condition that basically the freestanding site, uh, the freestanding sign, uh, let me read the first condition. Uh, the first recommended condition states one freestanding sign at 30 feet in height from the bottom of the detention basin to the top of the sign is hereby approved in substantial compliance with the applicant submitted site plan. All other requirements of zoning ordinance section 4.2 signs shall be met. Any substantial modifications shall require additional review by the Board of Adjustment. So if the building permit came in and it was placed somewhere with a substantially different height than what was shown. Uh, staff would have them resubmit plans that were substantially compliant or come back for another variance. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Okay, and John, if you don't have any more questions, then um, we will see if the applicant would like to um, address the board, has any information that they would want to provide um, that we have not viewed. We did get in our package um, the, the written um, information that, that was um, included. So if you do like to speak, I need you to um, give us your name and mailing address, please. Hey, yes, my name, can you guys hear me all right? Well, my mic's a little soft. Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. great. Yes. My name's Natalie Mikoski, previously Natalie Griffin. Um, my address is 1130 North Alma School Drive, Suite 120 in Mesa, Arizona, 85201. And I do have a little presentation to share with you guys. Let me get that set up here. As you're doing that, Marty, um, I'm not sure. Okay, we've made Natalie co-host. Great, thank you. Yeah. So on this screen here, you can see the standard speedway sign on the left side um, in the the current request for the sign on the right side. And this sign design has been greatly reduced by the developer in order to adhere to county requirements and pursue this request in good faith. The modifications include the reduction in height from 110 feet to 40 feet, the removal of the pricers and the reduction of total sign area from 260 square feet to 72 square feet, which is under the 75 foot square foot maximum allowed by code. This is another um, aerial, not aerial, but depiction of that 15 foot total grade difference, which is the 11 feet from natural grade plus the four feet in the retention basin. Uh, because of the grade difference in plant retention basin, we would not have any above grade visibility in this location. And turning properties don't have the same proximity or adjacency to the I-40 as this site does, and they have sufficient visibility, visibility from their road frontages. This sign placement is shown uh, is best placed along Transwestern or along the highway frontage in order to capture incoming driveway drivers to the area right away. We feel that this placement allows drivers as much time as possible to see that a gas station is present and to make appropriate vehicular movements before they get to that busy freeway Transwestern Shadow Mountain Brannigan intersection, and also prior to the roundabout where Speedway secondary entrances are located off of. This is the site plan, the current site plan and aerial view of the sign placement, which you can see in the red rectangle off to the left. Um, and I'm just showing this to show that any alternative locations for the sign placement would be along overloaded intersections or too close to the first ride-in only entrance, notated as uh, A, and it wouldn't be visible at all to any drivers on Shadow Mountain Drive if it were placed near the B or C entrances. And then lastly, the top left perspective here you've seen in your staff report, um, it conceptually shows the placement of the speedway sign. 
and the bottom right image shows the same perspective with the existing commercial development in the area. As you can see, the 40 foot sign wouldn't add or detract from the aesthetics of the area. And that's all I have. Thank you. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Natalie. Does any of the um, members of the board have any questions for Natalie? Yeah, this is Chris. Um, I guess I'm not clear on why 40 feet is necessary when 30 meets code. So, actually, 15 may, meets code, and then you have to interpolate to get to the 30. Correct, you know, because of the retention basin. We had previously done a sign survey with a company. They went out and put a balloon up on the property at, I think it was like 140 feet. And they showed all the different instances and heights um, that would provide visibility. And 40 feet was found to be the minimum. So that's why we've gone in with that request. So just 40 feet for visibility from the perspectives you're seeing here. Thank you very much. It seems That's to me I, for, I for, for at Go ahead, John. Uh, I'll, I'll talk when it gets to be our, our time. Okay. All right. Thank you, Natalie. And yes, all the uh, uh, members of the board did see that previous presentation with those balloon heights um, when uh, for the previous application. So uh, we remembered um, taking a look at those and they were shown at different heights. So thank you. Okay, well, um, at this point, I will move to the public. Is there anybody that would like to speak on this case? And if you are, um, can uh, you give your name and your mailing address, please? And I'm looking and I think I see that we have a P. Whitworth, a Susan Bolin, a Leon McGovern, and then somebody with a phone number ending in 2859. So are there four people in the public? I, I'm assuming. Madam Chair, it appears there are four. Okay, so would you like, um, why don't I just go in the um, order, I'll just call your name and you can speak. I'll just go in the order that's on the screen. So P. Whitworth, if you'd like to speak, please again, give us your full name and mailing address. And you would have to unmute your microphone. This is Brian Bates. I'm a uh, nom potential nominee for the Board of Adjustment. My question is, are there any other signs in this region that um, are at 40 feet or that had special exemption for being uh, taller than what the uh, staff is recommending? Thank you. So Brian, um, Zach is going to answer that for you um, as staff and let us know if there's been any other variances granted. And Brian, I also would need you to um, give us your mailing address, please. My mailing address is PO Box 3601, Flagstaff, Arizona 86003. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. So not far from this property, basically a stone's throw to the Northwest, there's Pilot Travel Center that has signs that are two freestanding signs that are pretty tall. Those are legal non-conforming or basically grandfathered. Uh, they were built in the 60s or so, and it was before uh, we had uh, sign regulations like the ones we do today. And so those signs uh, are allowed to remain and they can even reface them. Um, and that's part of state law and parts of our zoning ordinance allow those to remain. 
Um, there have been some sign variances in the past. I, I'm not in the Belmont area, but I think possibly staff didn't do the full research on all of the different cases within the county. And actually, Madam Chair, you've been on the board for a long time. You might be able to speak a little bit better to it. But I think there was at least one variance in Mons Park for something maybe similar to the 40 foot request. Uh, that's the topic of this case tonight. And other than that, there aren't many instances of it happening. Every uh, most other um, commercial properties get a 15 foot tall from natural grade um, freestanding sign as is required by the zoning ordinance. And correct, um, Zach, that does um, the Munns Park uh, gas station that is well below grade um, as, as you have to go down um, below the highway. And that did have uh, is the one that I can think of that did that did have a height um, uh, variant, um, basically. But and and I I know that um, the request was modified. Again, it was um, the height that was asked for was not approved. A smaller height was. And one of the um, one of the things that we bring out, Brian, is that you know a dot has done a good job of um, giving signs, giving uh, motorists information about what type of um, businesses they're going to find at the interche intersection as they're traveling and um, where, you know, drivers that are looking for um, food, gasoline and such also have the ADOT signs to rely on. So um, that that was is part of the reasoning on that also. Okay, I'll go back. If Brian, do you have any other questions at this time? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. No, I have no other questions. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm going to go back to see if one of the people in the public, which again I can see as a P. Whitworth, a Susan Bolin. Leanne McGovern and one other person um, with the phone number 2589, if you would like to speak. And if you would, at this time, you need to unmute your microphone. Hello? Yes. I'm Susan Bullion. I can hear you, Susan. Thank you. Um, yes, I live out in Belmont, uh, 12194 Mensa Court. Um, I did submit an email. Um, I don't know if you've had a chance to read it or not with regards to the sign. Um, and my feeling on this is why did the local community instill signing and um, uh, what's the right word? Um, codes. Uh, basically, how do we want the community to look if they're not going to be followed? Um, I understand a business does need signage. I get that. And um, seeing how this is going to be placed in a drainage uh, spot, I could see how they are asking for a slightly larger sign. But I would like it to stick to the 30 foot rather than 40 or something higher and something that sticks to the local uh, flavor, shall we say, of what the community has asked for. I get that pilot is grandfathered. Um, so there's nothing that can be done with that. But I would like to see future businesses stick to what the community has designed and requested. They put a lot of work into that and um, I, I think that's appropriate. That's my feeling. Thank you, Susan. Yes, um, the area plans are very important and they, they do help, um, you know, planning and zoning and the board of adjustment and um, to uh, know what the community has spent a lot of time putting together. So Correct. thank you for 
input. We appreciate it. Is, Thank is you there anyone for listening. That, yes. Is there any member of the um, board that would um, have any information would like to um, talk to Susan? Okay, thank you. So at this point, I'll ask if um, Liam or um, Whitworth would like to speak. And if you do, please unmute your microphone. So Madam Chair, Liam is our intern and he's just viewing. Oh. Okay, thank you. Okay, so there's two more. If anybody else would like to speak, this would be your time. Otherwise, I'm going to close the public portion. So um, if you would like to speak, unmute your microphone and let us know. Otherwise, we're going to move on. Okay, well, thank you. Um, so um, stat, we, the board has now heard from staff, the applicant and the public. So at this point, we will close um, the this portion and we will have the board members discuss the case and its merits. So at this point, um, uh, we'll start that discussion with um, John and Chris and Diane, myself. Okay, well, this is John. Um, you know, I think we've had some cases and I've I know there's a tall sign down there in Williams on the north side of the road, but I think um, the thought process on uh, the, how staff came up with the uh, 30 feet is spot on. And I wouldn't wanna go any higher than really what the code says um, because it's unfair to uh, the neighbors and the other businesses, including uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Bolin. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say that I'm in favor and I can make uh, can, can make the case to go with the 30 foot height from the bottom of the detention basin. Yeah, this is Chris. Um, I would have a hard time agreeing with the 40 foot height as well. Um, I think area plans do speak a lot loudly and should be listened to. And I agree that people put a lot of time into them. And um, I mean, the code is there and we've kind of bounced around with this uh, a while ago when they wanted 110 feet or whatever it was. Um, I would also be in favor of the 30 foot variance, um, but I would not be in favor of the 40 foot. Thank you, Chris. And I think um, I am in agreement. Um, I could make the same finding of, of fact that staff could. And um, I feel that the 30 foot will put it where it, the height should be if um, the property did not have uh, grade issues. So I'm not in favor of 40 feet. We just had a lot of discussion about this when we saw this case previously. And especially since it does bo um, border residential property. Um, and again, the ADOT signs bordering um, uh, we feel that there does not have to be this amount of signage and um, that Speedy is going to be the first gas station they see and that's going to, uh, um, be, you know, have enough signage that they'll know there's a gas station there. So at this point, I think we um, are all in agreement um, with staff that 30 foot is um, the amount that we would be willing to grant a variance for for this specific site on the site plan. This is Chris again. I also uh, would be concerned if we were to go any higher, we'd be setting a precedence uh, for future development out there that the whole community has basically spoken against. So I think the 30 foot is, is the standard that we need to stick with only because 15 feet of it is in that detention basin. Otherwise, the 15 foot is what they want and what we should honor. Thank you. Yeah, right. I also well, think that they benefit from the from the pilot sign because 
if people need gas, they're going to get off there because they can see the tall pilot sign. And when they, you know, just get up um, on the exit, they're going to see, or as they get off, they're going to see the other options, uh, including Speedway. So yeah, I think there's every reason to just go with the with the 30 foot from the bottom of the basin. So I would move to approve case VAR-22-002, including recommendations from staff, specifically only allowing 30 foot height from the bottom of the detention basin. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we have a unanimous um, that the variance will be granted um, and it has been modified to 30 feet. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for um, hanging in there. Our, my first technical um, problems. So <laughs> I appreciate um, everything you guys did to get me online. So thank you. And at this uh, point, uh, do we ha have a meeting for um, next week? I mean, next month, excuse me. Madam Chair, so we do have a number of cases uh, where people have applied in time to get on to the uh, July 19th hearing. So there will be a meeting if you all can, um, if there will be a quorum, and we hope to get Brian Bates, who's on the meeting tonight, it looks like appointed by that time. Not sure if we'll be able to get him appointed at, at this time, <clears throat> but um, assuming there's a quorum, then we do have cases ready to go forward. But I also want to mention that I have one more agenda item for you, and it's about, it's uh, basically um, a discussion on doing a special training. Yes, I, I'm for I that, that but I'm, I'm, think, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I think that would be wonderful. Um, you know, just to, if we have a new member that's going to be joining and um, I don't know that Chris ever got any real, you know, kind of formal training and, you know, we haven't been doing this as much as we did before. So it is nice to um, come in and, and get some refreshments. Yeah, this sure. is Chris, and I would I would appreciate um, additional training. That would be good. Yeah, good. I'm I'm kind of thinking that we should do it in person so we could get to know each other a little better. Absolutely, actually. So I had a couple slides prepared, and of course, this would be a very informal discussion. Uh, but then I can take notes on the slide to uh, go through what possibly we would have on the agenda for a special training. And one of the questions was, should, should it be in person or not? Uh, that sort of thing. So, um, and I don't know, Madam Chair, if you'd like to invite uh, Brian to be part of the discussion. This is part of the public hearing. So I think uh, you'd be within your right to do that. I'm going to go ahead and share those few slides that I made uh, just to get the discussion going. So I think that doing the kind of training that I was thinking of um, in light of Chris has done really well. Uh, we did meet uh, before he got appointed to the Board of Adjustment and we talked maybe for about an hour or so, but it wasn't really a very formal training. Um, so sorry about that, Chris, but I think especially now that if, if Brian is going to be appointed, uh, which basically he's all set to be appointed. I just need to finish a staff report and get that on the Board of Supervisors agenda. You all, of course, are appointed by your um, supervisor for your district. Um, then, you know, I think in light of having 50% of the Board of Adjustment be rel at least relatively newer, that it would be a good time to do a refresher uh, for you all to meet each other and hear about each other's backgrounds and that sort of thing. So I was thinking it might take about an hour or two. Um, I think that I'd like to do that. First, let me confirm when I can get Brian appointed, which should be very soon. And then obviously after that, um, but I wanted to know 
would you all be open to doing this at a time outside of your normal meetings? We typically meet uh, if there are cases on the third Tuesday of each month from three until the cases are done, usually about five, you know, would you want to do it before the next set of cases on the same day? So maybe starting um, a separate meeting at like one o'clock or something, and then going into the hearing at three, would you like another, um, a completely different day? Uh, what do you all think about that? Zach, um, this is Chris. We'll be by eight till August. So, uh, but in person, I would do it on the nineteenth. I'm sorry, you kind of. Uh, I wasn't to able to hear you. Then. I wasn't able to hear you for a minute there, and I hope you all can hear me. Could you please repeat that, Chris? Hello? Yes. Okay, good. Can you hear me? I can. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, okay, yeah. Um, I'll be in Massachusetts from July 18th till August 1st. So on the same day, July 19th won't work for me if you want to do it in person. And I'd kind of like to do it in person. Um, so doing it before then would be better for me. Okay. I'm gone. I'm gone July 2nd to July 10th, but available uh, otherwise. Madam Chair, since Brian's on, um, maybe, is it okay if I asked him when, sure. yes. when Brian, do you think you'd be available? Can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, so I'm basically open for July uh, at present. I do work as a naturalist and I do get called out occasionally, but um, at this point, July is pretty open. So if you wanted to do something prior to July, well, July 2nd, Diane is out. Uh, between July 10th and July 18th, I likely would be available. Okay, John, are you available during those times or is that when you're uh, heading out to the coast? Um, yeah, the week of the 11th through the 15th, I'm good. I'm available. Okay. It looks like we have some conflicts here. And if Chris is not, or sorry, yeah, if Chris is out July 18th to August 1st, so we won't then, unless I can get Brian on before that time. Well, let me just, I'll take these dates um, and I'll look at proposing something that maybe can meet all of our schedules and, and I'll get back to the board on that. But it sounds like we all wanna do in person. Is that right? Uh, this is Brian. I would prefer an in-person meeting. Uh, I'm more of a people person than a virtual. Sounds good. And then even just more generally then, um, if the board would like to, we could try to do all of our meetings moving forward in person, or I could give a shot at doing the hybrid, meaning some of you would be in our office at um, 2500 North Fort Valley Road. And some of you could be online and I would have to figure out the technology behind that. But just generally, what is everyone's feelings on that? I'm fine for going I back. Can go yeah, I'm fine for going back in person. Um, I think it's great if we do have the ability to be hybrid, if there is somebody who, again, just make sure that we have a quorum and I do like more the merrier. So if we could hybrid in somebody that wants to be here, if they're out of town would be great. Okay, well, I'm gonna try to work with the technology and the office and see 
if I think that I can make that happen uh, in person, mostly with the ability to hybrid, I think I can do. But in any case, so I'll get back to you about the dates um, and I'll maybe propose some times or there's something called a doodle poll. I don't know if you guys have used it. I haven't really used it that much. Maybe I can get the intern to <laughs> help me with it. Uh, but it will, it, it will allow everybody to click what dates and times that are available and wherever there's the most intersection of all of you guys, um, that it's a tool to help me figure that out. So I'll work on that. Uh, but the next slide I had was maybe a proposed agenda for what we would talk about during that. So I think we would start with having full introduction. Maybe uh, each of you could, uh, you know, describe what your past experiences on are with um, the kind of work that the board does, um, or the way that you've worked with the community in the past, uh, etc. Um, I could do some background on the community development department for some of you who have not had as much experience with us. Uh, and it has changed a decent amount in the last number of years. I could see if I could get speakers from uh, the different divisions if you're interested, or we could keep it more narrowly focused uh, toward topics like, um, you know, what what the board's role is in general, that sort of thing. Um, I was thinking legal topics like open meeting law is very important, of course. Um, discussion, discussing what a quasi-judicial board, the role and how, how that works. And I was planning on getting uh, Aaron with the county attorney's office to give us sort of a review of that. What is a conflict of interest, of course, is really important and avoiding that. Um, and talking about Robert's Rules of Order, of course, um, our chair, Diane Patterson, is, is really good at keeping everybody in order, but even just maybe a little run through, I don't know uh, if Brian has as much experience in, in boards and commissions that, that run that way. I'm not sure. I know that he's worked um, on, he's worked with our Dony Park Timberline Fernwood area plan update, which has a steering committee, but I'm not sure if they go by the Roberts Rules of Order. I haven't talked to our long range planner about that. I could even get the long range planner to, to give us some updates and discussions about area plans, that sort of thing, if the board's interested. And I was thinking, because we have some pretty long ten tenured members of the Board of Adjustment that we could just have a time where, um, you know, John and Diane could give us advice. Uh, what are your takes on the findings? Because, you know, they're pretty um, subjective. Maybe stories from the past cases that might be helpful for the new members. Uh, what do you all think about what I have planned for possible agenda topics. Is there anything I'm missing? Is there stuff I should take off of it? No, I think it sounds great. Okay. Yeah, I think it sounds good too. Yeah, the one thing I would say is for people that maybe we keep it a little more narrow because right now, okay. maybe we go narrow and then move big, which is usually go big and go narrow. But especially knowing that um, Brian served on his area board. That's, I mean, that is a, a huge commitment. I've served on mine. Um, I, Sean, I think might've served on his, um, you know, yeah. you, that, that tells me you, that, you know, there's a real big, you got so much information and that, that helps because I think that really keeps, um, you, you know, you, you can walk in with a, a real good background. And one thing I always would suggest is just I go online everyone I mean go to, go to a PNZ meeting go to a, uh, a, a board of supervisors meeting they're really interesting <laughs> or if nothing else go online and read um, they have their work sessions and then they have their meetings but you know you can glean a lot of information from reading those um, minutes um, so that's kind of something, you know, just to throw in there. But um, I think we just kind of talk about the board of adjustment and then, um, and, and our league, I think legal is one of my big concerns is, you know, I, we are, I think that's the, 
the hottest topic for me. Absolutely. Anyone else? No, would would uh, a county uh, lawyer be able to be there? Yeah, I was actually, and I haven't asked yet, but I'm sure that uh, he'll help us. Um, Aaron Lumpkin with our county attorney's office. Typically, uh, he appears at all of the meetings, so maybe he missed the invite to this one or had a conflict. He usually then will have uh, another county attorney here. But uh, Aaron Lumpkin represents our department, and uh, he's given these sorts of updates for the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, so, uh, yes, I'm definitely planning on having him there. Uh, How this long is, is Brian he again? Uh, did I cut somebody off? Oh Go uh, ahead. I, I would be in favor of having the legal advice there as well. And one of the things I would like to know more about is the intersection between the Board of Adjustment and the Planning and Zoning Commission, because uh, I anticipate there's some overlap. Uh, so that would be helpful from my perspective. Sure. Yeah. And, and I have that here as one of the items, Brian. Um, like, for example, today we looked at a variance for something that's going to go on to the Planning and Zoning Commission and how do those two things affect each other. So, um, but keeping in mind, uh, I'll also try to keep it as narrow while including that topic uh, uh, as possible. Sounds great. Okay. And then what do I have here? Is there anything else that you all would like to get out of a special training? Other people from my department that uh, you might want to hear from, uh, or do you just want to hang out with me and we'll uh, and Aaron and we'll we'll <laughs> talk about <laughs> and we'll have a sort of informal discussion? You know, I think uh, this is Chris again. I think that uh, this is a lot on one plate. Um, you know, we could have additional meetings, uh, even Zoom at, at some point, but um, I think if we get too long, it'll be just like mind boggling. <laughs> good so point. I think, I think what you've got listed and what we've talked about sounds really good. Um, I, I think we shouldn't push too hard to include too much. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, and we'll try to keep it relatively short. Um, I know you all are very busy, um, but... Uh, Go I want to real quickly. I want to agree with Chris that mm -hmm. focused is better than uh, broad. Okay, that's a consensus. We'll keep it narrow. Um, all right. Well, in that case, um, w but would you all like to? It sounds like you would like to, and it looks like we have some tricky sort of conflicts with people's schedules going on here, uh, but I will figure it out. Did you want to have it independently from a normal board of adjustment day and time or um, just see whenever it were? I, you know, I, I guess I'll just do that doodle poll and that will be our best way to figure that out. So I'll send that out as soon as I can. And other than that, I mean, that's really all that, <laughs> sorry. So that's really all that I had. Um, and unless there's anything else, Madam Chair, uh, I guess you could conclude the meeting. Sure. Um, Zach, do you know, do you think we'll have one, two, or three cases for July? Do you have any idea at this point? Well, there are actually four that have been applied for. Um, but I think the department has some wiggle room as far as where we can put them on the hearing. And because I also handle cases to the Planning and Zoning Commission and current building cases, uh, permits and that sort of thing, uh, I'm not sure that I can swing it, all of those cases in one month for you all. Uh, I'm having a meeting with the other planners in the office to see if I can divvy some out. But possibly I'm going to, it's actually the same applicant for four different properties adjacent to each other where they're one acre minimum zone, but they have like 
5,000 to 10,000 square feet on the parcel. So the setbacks are designed for a bigger zone. And they seem, seems to me like on the first glance that they would be pretty shoe in easy type variances. Um, but I'm going to ask the applicant if they have two of those cases that are more urgent than others that we could tackle um, in July if we have a quorum for that, uh, or try to separate those a bit. Okay, sounds good. Okay. But no, yeah, so that's good, rather than four completely unique cases. That, that's good to hear. Yeah, it's possible that we'll try to stack them, but they're not completely unique. Uh, or I'm more of the mind that I'd like to try to separate them into different hearings a little bit, uh, just because of other things on the workload for the planners. Um, but I'll, I'll get back in touch with you all as soon as I can on that. And um, especially with Brian getting him appointed because it looks like Chris will be out for July 18th and I'm not sure about John's availability um, but if he's not appointed then um, we wouldn't have a quorum for that so I have a number of things on my plate that I'll, I'll try to get contact back with everybody including Brian on uh, within the next week or two Zach I can do it on the 19th I'll just be I'd have to do it zoom all right Okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't have a problem with the date of the meeting. It would be the additional meeting that I wanted to make sure you weren't trying to put it on July 18th. <laughs> I see. Okay, sounds good. Well, um, you know, we'll be in contact with you all. Um, let me sort a couple things out and I'll send out some emails to you all and we'll try to set this special training because I think it'll be helpful. It sounds like you all uh, I think that it would be helpful also. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, at this point, I'll look I for move to a, wrap up this meeting. Yes, a motion to adjourn, please. I move to adjourn. I second. Second. All, all in favor. Aye. Aye. See you later. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Chris.